apologize again about my lack of uploads. This is actually related to the same problem that I had before, but now I'm hoping that it is resolved. So, as you may know, a bolt of lightning went down in my street near my house and it fried a lot of the nearby electronics, including my computer. We thought we had fixed my computer, but a very essential part of my computer, my graphics processing unit, had been damaged. And thus, I had to wait a few days to get a new one. Um, we got a medium to high range graphics card called the 280 RTX Super by NVIDIA, if you are interested. Um, and I'm pretty happy with it. But anyway, without any further ado, I would like to say that I am this time fairly sure that I should be back. Um, because it doesn't seem like there is anything stopping me producing content now, which is interesting because for the last few months there have been significant obstacles continuously in my way, so I'm hoping maybe now there'll be a golden age of my channel, you know, something nice like that. Today we are reading about Bacterio. Ages. Um, someone requested this a little while ago on my channel, and from my brief histology studies, my study of microorganisms um, and cells during university, I'd only come across bacteria phages, a very small amount, so naturally I am extremely pumped to read. This Wikipedia. So, without further ado, please remember that I cannot pronounce any scientific names or terminology. Here is the bacteriophage Wikipedia. A bacteriophage, also known informally as a phage, is a virus that infects and replicates within bacteria and archaea. Interesting. It infects the infection. The term was derived from bacteria and the Greek phagin, meaning to devour. Bacteriophages are composed of proteins that encapsulate a DNA or RNA genome and may have structures that are either simple elaborate. Their genomes may encode as few as four genes, e.g. MS2, and as many as hundreds of genes. Phages replicate within the bacterium following the injection of their genome into its cytoplasm, a little bit like a extremely tiny infectious mosquito. <laughs> That's not in the Bacteriophages are among the most common and diverse entities in the biosphere. Bacteriophages are ubiquitous viruses found wherever bacteria exist. It is estimated that there are more than 10 to the power of 31 bacteriophages on the planet more than every other organism on Earth, including bacteria themselves. Combined, one of the densest natural sources of phages and other viruses is seawater, where up to 9 times 10 to the power of 8 virions per milliliter have been found in microbial mats at the surface and up to 70% of marine bacteria may be infected by phages. Phages have been used since
since the late 20th century as an alternative to antibiotics in the former Soviet Union and Central Europe, as well as in France. What? They are seen as possible therapy against multi-drug resistant strains of many bacteria. See phage therapy. On the other hand, phages of Inoviridae have been shown to complicate biofilms involved in pneumonia and cystic fibrosis and to shelter the bacteria from drugs meant to eradicate diseases, thus promoting persistent infection. It definitely seems like we have great cause to do further investigation here then. On to classification. Bacteriophages occur abundantly in the biosphere with different genomes and lifestyles. Phages are classified by the International Committee on Taxonomy of Viruses, ICTV, according to morphology and nucleic acid. Interesting. And then we have a rather long list of viruses which I shall not read today. Now on to the history of bacteriophages. In 1896, Ernest Hanbury Hanken, what a great name, reported that something in the waters of the Ganges and the Yamuna rivers in India had marked antibacterial action against cholera and it could pass through a very fine porcelain filter. In 1915, British bacteriologist Frederick Dwart, superintendent of the Brown Institution of London, discovered a small agent that infected and killed bacteria. He believed the agent must be one of the following. 1. A stage in the life cycle of the bacteria, or 2. An enzyme produced by the bacteria themselves, or 3. A virus that grew on and destroyed the bacteria. Dwart's research was interrupted by the onset of World War I, as well as a shortage of funding and the discovery of antibiotics. Independently, French-Canadian microbiologist Félix Durel, working on the Pasteur Institute in Paris, announced on the 3rd of September 1917 that he had discovered an invisible antagonistic microbe of the dysentery bacillus. For Durel, there was no question as to the nature of his discovery. In a flush, I had understood what caused my clear spots was in fact an invisible microbe, a virus parasitic on a bacteria. Darrell called the virus a bacteriophage, a bacteria eater, from the Greek phagin meaning to devour. A very fitting name, I think. Good job at naming it. He also recorded a dramatic account of a man suffering from dysentery who was restored to good health by the bacteriophages. It was Darrell who conducted much research into bacteriophages and introduced the concept of phage therapy. More than half a century later, in 1969, Max de Buch, Alfred Hirschley, and Salvador Luria were awarded the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine for their discoveries of the replication of viruses and their genetic structure. Good job for that. Now on to phage therapy, one of the uses. Phage 
phages were discovered to be antibacterial agents and were used in the former Soviet Republic of Georgia, pioneered there by Georgi Ilyeva, with help from the co-discover of bacteriophages Felix Stoyer. During the 1920s and 1930s, for treating bacterial infections, they had widespread use, including treatment of soldiers in the Red Army. However, they were abandoned for general use in the West for several reasons. One, antibiotics were discovered and marketed widely. They were easier to make, store, and prescribe. Medical trials of phages were carried out, but a basic lack of understanding raised questions about the validity of these trials. And three, publication of research in the Soviet Union was mainly in the Russian or Georgian languages, and for many years was not followed internationally. The use of phages has continued since the end of the Cold War in Russia. Georgia and elsewhere in Central and Eastern Europe. The first regulated, randomized, double-blind clinical trial was reported in the Journal of Wound Care in June 2009, which evaluated the safety and efficacy of a bacteriophage cocktail to treat infected venous ulcers of the leg in a human patients. The FDA approved the study as a phase one clinical trial. The study's results demonstrated the safety of therapeutic application of bacteriophages, but did not show efficacy. The authors explained that the use of certain chemicals that are part of standard wound care, e.g. lactoferrin or silver may have interfered with bacteriophage viability. Shortly after that, another controlled clinical trial in Western Europe, treatment of ear infections caused by Pseudomonas aringosa, was reported in the journal Clinical Octolaryngology in August of 2009. The study concludes the bacteriophage preparations were safe and effective for treatment of chronic ear infections in humans. Additionally, there have been numerous animal and other experimental clinical trials evaluating the efficacy of bacteriophages for various diseases such as infected burns and wounds and cystic fibrosis associated lung infections, among others. Meanwhile, bacteriophage researchers have been developing engineered viruses to overcome antibiotic resistance and engineering the phage genes responsible for coding enzymes that degrade the biofilm matrix. Phage structural proteins and the enzymes responsible for lysis of the bacterial cell wall. There have been results showing that T4 phages that are small in size and short-tailed can be helpful in detecting E. coli in the human body. Therapeutic efficacy of a phage cocktail was evaluated in a mice model with nasal infection of multi-drug resistant MDR A. Bulmani. Mice treated with the phage cocktail showed a 2.3 fold higher survival rate than those untreated in seven days post-infection. In 2017, a patient with a pancreas comprised by MDR A. Bulmani was put on several antibiotics. Despite this, the patient's health continued to deteriorate during a four-month period. Without effective antibiotics, the patient was subjected to phage therapy using a phage cocktail containing nine different phages.
pages that had been demonstrated to be effective against MDRA bowel money. Once on this therapy, the patient's downward clinical trajectory reversed and returned to health. Durrell quickly learned that the bacteriophages are found wherever bacteria thrive, in sewers, in rivers that catch waste runoff from pipes, and in the stools of convalescent patients. This includes rivers traditionally thought to have healing powers, including India's Ganges River. Now, let's take a little bit of a look at the food industry. Since 2006, the United States Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, and the United States Department of Agriculture, the USDA, have approved several bacteriophage products. For example, LMP-102, which is intralytics, intralytics, which is intralytics, and was approved for treating ready-to-eat RTE poultry and meat products. In that same year, the FDA approved Listex developed and produced by Micrius, using bacteriophages on cheese to kill Listeria monocytogenes bacteria in order to give them generally recognized as safe grass status. In July 2007, the same bacteriophage were approved for use on all food products. In 2011, the USDA confirmed that Listex is a clean label processing aid and is included in the USDA. Research in the field of food safety is continuing to see if lytic phages are a viable option to control other foodborne pathogens in various food products. Now into the dairy industry. Bacteriophages present in the environment can cause fermentation failures of cheese starter cultures. In order to avoid this, mixed strain starter cultures and culture rotation regimes have to be used. And into diagnostics. In 2011, the FDA cleared the first bacteriophage-based product for in vitro diagnostic use. The key path MRSA slash MSSA blood culture test used as a cocktail of bacteriophage to detect Staphylococcus aureus in positive blood cultures and determine methicillin resistance or susceptibility. The test returns results in about five hours compared to two or three days for standard microbial identification and susceptibility test methods. It was the first accelerated antibiotic susceptibility test approved by the FDA. Now, on to counteracting bioweapons and toxins. Government agencies in the West have been looking to Georgia and the former Soviet Union for help with exploiting phages for counteracting bioweapons and toxins such as anthrax and botulism. Developments are continuing among research groups in the US. Other users include spray applications in horticulture for protecting plants and vegetable produce from decay and the spread of bacterial disease. Other applications for bacteriophages are as biocides for environmental services, e.g. in hospitals, and as preventative treatments for catheters and medical devices before use in clinical 
settings. The technology for phages to be applied to dry surfaces, e.g. uniforms, curtains, or even sutures for surgery now exists. Clinical trials reported in clinical otolaryngology showed success in veterinary treatment of pet dogs with otitis. The septic bacterium sensing and identification method uses the ion emission and its dynamics during phage infection and offers high specificity and speed for detection. On to phage display. Phage display is different use of phages involving a library of phages with a variable peptide linked to a surface protein. Each phage genome encodes the variant of the protein displayed on its surface, hence the name. Providing a link between the peptide variant and its encoding gene, variant phages from the library may be selected through their binding affinity to an immobilized molecule, e.g. botulism toxin, to neutralize it. The bound selected phages can be multiplied by reinfecting a susceptible bacterial strain, thus allowing them to retrieve the peptides encoded in them for further study. Now on to antimicrobial drug discovery. Phage proteins often have antimicrobial activity and may serve as leads for peptide dominatics, i.e. drugs that mimic peptides. Phage ligand technology makes use of phage proteins for various applications such as binding of bacteria and bacterial components, e.g. endotoxin, and the lysis of bacteria. Basic research. Bacteriophages are important model organism for studying principles of evolution and ecology. Of course, because of how quickly they mutate. Now, on to replication. Bacteriophages may have a lytic cycle or lysogenic cycle with lytic phages such as the T4 phage. Bacterial cells are broken open, lysed, and destroyed after immediate replication of the virion. As soon as the cell is destroyed, the phage progeny can find new hosts to infect. Some lytic phages undergo a phenomenon known as lysis inhibition, where completed phage progeny will not immediately lyse out of the cell if extracellular phage concentrations are high. This mechanism is not identical to that of the temperate phage going dormant and usually is temporary. In contrast, the lysogenic cycle does not result in immediate lysing of the host cell. Those phages are able to undergo lysogeny, are known as temperate phages. Their viral genome will integrate with host DNA and replicate along with it, relatively harmlessly or may even become established as a plasmid. The virus remains dormant until host conditions deteriorate, perhaps due to depletion of nutrients. Then the endogenous phages, known as prophages, become active. At this point, they initiate the reproductive cycle, resulting in lysis of the host cell. As the lysogenic cycle allows the host cell to continue to survive and to reproduce, the virus is replicated. In contrast, 
the lysogenic cycle does not result. In contrast, the lysogenic cycle does not result in immediate lysing of the host cell. Those phages able to undergo lysogeny are known as temperate phages. Their viral genome will integrate with host DNA and replicate along with it relatively harmlessly or may even become established as a plasmid. The virus remains dormant until host conditions deteriorate, perhaps due to depletion of nutrients. Then the endogenous phases known as prophages become active. At this point they initiate the reproductive cycle, resulting in the lysis of the host cell. As the lysogenic cycle allows the host cell to continue to survive and reproduce, the virus is replicated in all offspring of the cell. An example of a bacteriophage known to follow the lysogenic cycle and the lytic cycle is the phage lambda of E. coli. Sometimes prophages may provide benefits to the host bacterium while they are dormant by adding new functions to the bacterial genome in a phenomenon called lysogenic conversion. Examples are the conversion of harmless strains of Cornobacterium diphtheria or Vibrio cholera by bacteriophages to highly virulent ones that cause diphtheria or cholera, respectively. Strategies to combat certain bacterial infections by targeting these toxin-encoded prophages have been proposed. <coughs> and now on to attachment and penetration. Bacterial cells are protected by a cell wall of polysaccharides, which are important virulence factors protecting bacterial cells against both immunohost defenses and antibiotics. To enter a host cell, bacteriophages attach to specific receptors on the surface of bacteria, including lipopolysaccharides, dacoic acid proteins, or even flagella. This specificity means a bacteriophage can infect only certain bacteria, bearing receptors to which they can bind, which in turn determines the phage's host range. Polysaccharide degrading enzymes like endocillins are virion associated proteins to enzymatically degrade the capsular outer layer of their hosts. At the initial step of a tightly programmed phage infection process, host growth conditions also influence the ability of the phage to attach and invade them. As phage virions do not move independently, they must rely on random encounters with the correct receptors when in solution, such as blood, lymphatic circulation, irrigation, soil, water, etc. Myovirus bacteriophages such as a hypodermic syringe-like motion to inject their genetic material into a cell. After contacting the appropriate receptor, the tail fibers flex to bring the base plate closer to the surface of the cell. This is known as reversible binding. 
Once attached, completely irreversible binding is initiated and the tail contracts, possibly with the help of ADP present in the tail. Injecting genetic material through the bacterial membrane, the injection is accomplished through a sort of bending motion in the shaft by going to the side, contracting closer to the cell and pushing back up. Podoviruses lack an elongated tail sheath like that of a myovirus, so instead they use their small tooth-like tail fibers enzymatically to degrade a portion of the cell membrane before inserting their genetic material. Ew. Now onto synthesis of proteins and nucleic acid. Within minutes, bacterial ribosomes start translating the viral mRNA into protein. For RNA-based phages, RNA replicase is synthesized early in the process. Proteins modify the bacterial RNA polymerase, so it preferentially transcribes viral mRNA. The host's normal synthesis of proteins and nucleic acids is disrupted, and it is forced to manufacture viral products instead. These products go on to become part of new virions within the cell. Helper proteins that contribute to the assemblage of new virions or proteins involved in cell lysis. In 1972, Walter Fears in the University of Ghent, Belgium, was the first to establish the complete nucleotide sequence of a gene, and in 1976, of the viral genome of bacteriophage MS2. Some DSNA bacteriophages encode ribosomal proteins, which are thought to moderate protein translation during phage infection. Now on to virion assembly. In the case of the T4 phage, the construction of new virus particles involves the assistance of helper proteins. The base plates are assembled first, within the tails being built upon them afterwards. The head capsides, constructed separately, will spontaneously assemble with the tails. The DNA is packed efficiently within the heads. The whole process takes about 15 minutes. Now on to the release of virions. Phages may be released via cell lysis, by extrusion, or, in a few cases, by budding. Lysis by tailed phages is achieved by an enzyme called endolysin, which attacks and breaks down the cell wall, peptidolicin. An altogether different phage type, the filamentous phage, make the host cell continuous secrete new virus particles. Released virions are described as free, and unless defective, are capable of infecting a new bacterium. Budding is associated with certain mycoplasma phages. In contrast, Virion release phages displaying a lysogenic cycle do not kill the host, but rather become long-term residents as prophage. Now on to communication. Research in 2017 revealed that the bacteriophage 3T makes a short viral protein that signals other bacteriophages to lie dormant instead of killing the host bacterium. Arbitrium is the name given to this protein by the researchers who discovered it. Interesting. I wonder if that will be something that we
Stereophages are thought to contribute extensively to horizontal gene transfer in natural environments, principally via transduction but also via transformation. Metagenomics based studies also have revealed that viromes from a variety of environments harbor antibiotic resistant genes, including those that could confer multi drug resistance. And that is the end of the whispering Wikipedia about bacteriophages. I have to say that a lot of the information was interesting and a lot of it was very full of complicated scientific jargon and thus I hope maybe this Wikipedia formed as something which lets you fall asleep. I know that for myself most of my Wikipedias would keep me awake because I'm so interested but I hope the kind of more difficult scientific concepts kind of lull your mind into a kind of mindless state where your burden of consciousness is taken and you can lie your head upon your pillow and rest. Thank you so much for watching.